At least she isn't under our bed this time. Room 301 and Turtle, huh? I like Sumio's attitude. 
Although I do hope we get some kind of explanation for what's going on here. Because it's only gotten less and less clear as we've gone along. I feel like I started out knowing nothing about what was happening, and now I know less than nothing about what's happening. It's, uh, it's an odd feeling, you know? It's an odd feeling. 301. Room 301, huh? 301, 303, 302, 301. What are we gonna find in here? You know, I forgot to look at the lost and found puzzles today. Oh well. For once, we have something else to worry about. Another uniquely designed hotel room. Pretty nice looking room, I gotta say. I'm sure that it's very pretty out here. The sun is shining. Flowers blooming, birds are singing. Is there anything in here? Now uh, just another porch. They left the ceiling fan on, though. But what's this? I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not
As long as we don't end up like Urashima Taro. Whoa! Different music! That's how you know things are getting serious. Turtle, huh? I remember a turtle. And here we are, right on the page. This may be a common feature of resorts, but even though the island's a public place, it feels private and exclusive, and, uh... Lost... Here it is. The Lost Pass Large Ocean Turtle is on the brink of extinction, so... Seeing one nowadays is a rare thing. Measuring this one revealed it to be an impressive 128 centimeters, but that's actually pretty average for the species. Hmm. I bet you it'll be 128 is the number. What was the name of this photographer again? This photographer who whose ghost we may have encountered. I don't know. I've been wondering about that ghost what it had to do with anything. And I suppose we might find out. David Chapman. Although now that I think about it, David Chapman was not the ghost. It was a ghost of a girl that he had taken a photograph of. Or that he used as a model repeatedly, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. This must be the plug. Ah, sure enough. Three spaces. One, twenty, eight. Final answer. Nice work, Catherine. Right on the boat and the electronic island. Right on the boat. Right on the boat and the electronic island. Well, fine. That voice on that recording kind of freaked me out. Not gonna lie. Let's go to that cottage. I suppose we're gonna go into that cave that we saw the giant statue blast open in the cliff. Although actually, now that we're back out here, I might see what's on today's Lost and Found after all. I don't tend to be a completionist, trying to completely do everything that you can do in a game. And if that means doing things like getting bad endings, I honestly think you shouldn't be. But when it comes to things like finding all the hidden items, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to do that. It's just not something I particularly bother with. I remember that when I was little, I did 100% complete Pac-Man World and Pac-Man World 2. And I think also Sly Cooper and uh, Sly 2. But other than that, I've never, uh... 
never tried to complete a game 100%. Here we are. It looks like one of them is a maze or something. In any case... Now I can scan without fear. To the cottage, then. And that weird old woman. This story about a man trying to catch a terrorist is taken on a bizarrely metaphysical quality. It would be really awesome if the uh, YouTuber uh, Games as Literature did an analysis of this one. I'd be interested in uh, seeing what he would have to say about it. Of course, I could make my own literary analysis, but frankly, I just... I, I prefer not to. Not because I think it's a poor use of time, but because I think that my own time that's not what I want to do with my time. What I'm interested in is a... Uh, a distinctly different kind of activity. The amount of energy I'd have to put into making a video about, uh... about that is just not... To me, it's not worth it. Because I consider my, uh, energy and time better, uh, served by... R writing the short stories and books and other things that I have, uh been working on for years, and will continue to work on, no doubt, until I die. In some very real sense, it's why I go on living. In any case, for now let's focus on Sumio and his cause for living, the thing that motivates him to keep going. Searching. But as I've said many times already, or only two times before this, I think, we're all searching for something. Hey, hey. You still in the pool? She's not. I've got a bad feeling about all this. Ms. Ritz? There you are. <laughs> ah, it's like... Juan Tzu. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
Let's go. What all this has to do with a human smuggling organization, or human... What all this has to do with a human trafficking organization, I really have no idea at all. I'm quite curious how they're going to tie up all of these strange loose ends. So many bizarre, unresolved plot threads. I still don't know, for example, where those government agents went. Did Remy, after her revelation at Eliki Island, somehow understand already that Sumio was going to handle things, and so she and her partner left? I don't know. I don't know. Sumio doesn't know either. I agree with Sumio. There's no such thing as fate. It can be a kind of scary thought to realize just how much of our lives is determined by chance. But nonetheless, so our lives are. Or, you know, God or something. Wait, but that is fate, isn't it? I don't know what I believe. Actually, I do. I believe we have free will and individual agency in that we have to be responsible for our actions. If everything is predetermined, then our actions are basically meaningless, and it doesn't make any sense to hold us accountable for them because it wasn't really our choice to take those actions anyway. That's foolishness and can lead to some very real problems. Wait. Oh no, it's this way. Power Beach is this way. Sooner or later, I half expect that we're going to have some string of revelations that will connect all this together. Oh, that's what Toriko was doing here, what she has to do with this, where she is. Oh, this is what the deal is with Chris. This is what Stefan Charboni had to do with all of this. Why there's a cloning facility here. This is how the terrorist plot connects with the ancient conspiracy, which connects with the cloning facility, which connects with the human trafficking organization. But, somehow... I also quite earnestly suspect these things aren't going to come together so neatly. I'm still thinking about that uh, recording we heard in that hotel room. That voice really did creep me out, man. 
I suppose that that's the photographer, though. You think we're gonna meet the photographer? Well, if that was a recording of him, we certainly are. But I don't know. I don't know if we will or not, because I really have no idea what's going on here. I also feel that maybe we ought to be going to the airport instead. Maybe that'll be what we do tomorrow, if there is a tomorrow. For a second, that beat sounded like a, a voice going, ah. Only for a second, though. It's funny. When I first went to Eliki Island, I didn't expect anything spectacular was going to be found here. I was just here to fix some electrical things that, uh, the terrorists had sabotaged. But now, it's clear that this is no ordinary island. Not by a long shot. Oh, the building's been destroyed. That's odd. Was it that blast that did it? I suppose so. I'm glad that it didn't damage their power station, though. Being without electricity in this day and age would be a huge problem, after all. Hmm. That's weird. What's even here? I mean, I know there must be something here. Perhaps it's back this way. Now we can't go that way. Oh, oh! There's the cave. What we might find in there? I don't know. I just hope, I earnestly do, that we're doing the right thing here. Wow. Uh. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna save. Where the hell is Edo? I bet you that Edo is also one of the, uh... Or, wait, he certainly is, based on that description we heard earlier. He's certainly one of the 11 who escaped. How do we know how to get through here, though? Oh, I see. It resets whenever you take a wrong path. Oh, no, it just leads to a dead end. Well, trial and error, I guess. Real caves are quite frightening. If you've never been in one. They're spectacular and awe-inspiring, too, but the real problem here is that this cave isn't pitch black. But Sumio doesn't have any light source with him, so I don't know why it's not pitch black. Well, I do know why. It'd be too inconvenient for the player if it, if it was, but pitch blackness is one of the scariest things about caves. Yeah, they're, they're all dead ends. That's, uh, kind of strange. Well, I suppose I didn't really go all the way to the wall in that last corridor, so I'll go check there to make sure that I indeed took a wrong turn. I don't see how this... Oh, wait, no, it wasn't a dead end after all. Oh, okay. Left or right? Let's go left. If this fails, we'll go right. Simple as that. Alright. 
There's no guarantee that the other route isn't its own path, but so far so good. This time, let's make up for that. Let's go right. Okay. Yeah. I can't tell. I think it's a dead end. It's a dead end. I thought that we were going to have a guide waiting for us here. Isn't that what Lady Ritz said? Well, maybe I, the player, am the guide. Makes old mackerel phones feel kind of important, you know? Being the guide and all. Mu this music reminds me a little bit of uh, some of the rock levels in Kirby's Dreamland 3. Especially the one where uh, he had to bring his friend Choo Choo to her friend in Sand Canyon. I forget the name of her friend. Well, let's go down the middle. Take the middle road. I believe the middle path is a term from Chinese philosophy, though what it means I don't quite remember. Sumio, I'm not gonna lie, you have guts going in here like this. You might be getting hopelessly lost in an underground labyrinth, and yet... Why, well, it's not true. He can always get out by just going backwards for a long time. No matter how far in we go. What's this? Huh? Where are we? How did we go up? We, we were only going forward that whole time. And somebody lost something up here? Not, I'm gonna, not quite sure how that works, but... We'll talk to the scary man in a minute here. I feel the need to put at least a token effort towards these collectibles. Alright, which one is it? The first one? What is the shortest number of routes the dog must travel to reach his master? Uh... Oh, I hate these kinds of puzzles. I'm looking at this, and I don't know how it would be a three-digit number. Nor do I know... You know what? Forget it. I'm not doing this. They're too vague about what a route is in this context. Well, there you are. With your dog, no less. The man with the sunglasses. The man who made the recording, I betcha. That's odd, he's taking on our voice now. And we're beginning to have his voice.
Wait a minute. Wait, is that voice... That voice is separate from either of their dialogue. In any case, we're on that stranded boat! I guess that weird third voice is the dog? He has the eyes of the, of the mastermind. Sand dance shot. Is that the animal next to us? Oh, 
Is that how we were able to plug into Peter's eye? But the one who has the other silver eye must be... shot. And that's why he has one of his eyes covered. Right? I'm not quite sure I understand how Sumio knows who this guy is, but uh, sure. What do we have? His name is... is like Tokyo or Torik... Toriko or something, wasn't it? He was not, surprisingly enough, David Chapman. Uh... Uh... Come, wait, hold on, hold on! His... he's connected to a turtle, and there was something earlier written by a Taro turtle. But where was it? Sumio stands before him, feverishly flipping through this guidebook, just searching desperately for some kind of answers. Do you think it was uh, our friend here who wrote this guidebook? Or was it Edo who wrote and edited it together? I don't know. Hmm. Could be anywhere in this book. Let's do this systematically. We know it's not on page 20. And I would say it's not on page 21 or 22, so let's see 23. No, nope, not on 23. Nor is it on 24, of course. I remember it being a... a uh, separate sort of article from the page's primary, or first article, I ought to sh say. So, that was 24, 26. What about 27? No, it's not on 27. Where are you, Taro Turtle? Let's see. Come to think of it, maybe that is a reference to Urashima Taro, since the story is all about time flow. And, and anyway, that's something for a literary analysis. Just as Urashima Taro did a good deed and found time didn't flow normally for him, well, I don't know if there's a good deed that's being done here. Sumio might be trying his best to, but... I don't know. It's not here, not here. I remember that it was at the bottom of the page. Is this it? No, no it's not. This is just an advertisement for those speakers. Hmm. That was 36? Yeah, 36. So now we're on page 37. 
Uh, Je- no, no, I was, I was hopeful for a second there. Page 38. Let's see, El Sol fight. Now we're into the Mask Wrestlers. It's like we're reviewing the whole story once again. At least in some measure. And this is Stefan Charboni's article about bicycle ratios. Let's see, the radio station's guide. Wait, what? No, this is an advertisement for the pedometer at the end. And here we get more into Charboni. More about soccer formations. I don't think it's on this page, but I'll go all the way to the bottom to be sure. What was that, 43? 43. So now we're on page 44. Oh uh, yeah, this is the garbage collection information page. 45? We get into the psychology. And 46 is more psychology. We already looked here. What about 47? Fortune telling... Taro Turtle. Here we go, here we go. There is normally some trigger, some event that inspires the writing of a diary, and indeed there is a reason for this journal of my own. Reading back over my first submission now, the events of that day come vividly back. The event in question occurred the day before I started this diary, and now this journal that I've kept since that day in 1999, the 12th month, the 31st day, is going to end today. Why, you ask? Because even as you read this, which from your point of view would be today, a particular individual will have appeared before me. Oh, is this talking about Sumio, maybe? Let's keep going. For him, our meeting shall feel as though he had no choice in it. Thinking back now, I started this diary on the day from that moment I arrived on this island. I've always kept diaries in the past, so I was just taking up an old habit again. It's strange how, even if you don't really want anyone to read what you write there, one still writes a diary with the reader in mind. I don't think I realized it for the longest time, but my own awareness has been changed by writing this diary. I've come to realize that I am writing this diary directly for someone. I believe the man who will appear before me today. However, such questions as what am I trying to impart to him, or even why am I talking to him at all, are meaningless. There is no reason, that's why. Reading back over this diary now, I see that I came to this island in order for me to remain myself. That's all. I'm returning to Kanto today, with the greatest memento of my story possible tucked under one arm, a memento that will bring me a memento that he will bring me. A modest gift for a father deserving of my love. Okay, I don't think Sumio is this guy's father. But who knows at this point. I've changed my mind. My small corner here isn't going to end, but rather just take a leave of absence. Seeing this island again with eyes only black in color may not be so bad after all. Well then... To all readers of The Lost Pass, I bid you a temporary farewell. P.S. I'll be waiting to meet you. Both eyes black, huh? In any case, uh, he gives a date in that article, and that's probably what we have to put in. Yeah, his eyeball is just like uh, Peter's. Wait, does that mean that Peter is going to be the bad guy? That'd be quite a twist. I've been wondering what exactly Peter has been doing, you know. Alright, here we are. That's quite a few digits we have to put in there, huh? Let's see exactly how he phrased it in his diary. Uh, in 1999. So that is, uh, four of these digits, and then there's still four more, so that'll be all of them then. Well, here's the one for that 1999. 1999 was an eventful year. Or maybe it was. Probably not particularly eventful, honestly, but... Well, I was still a baby back then, so as you can imagine, I don't exactly remember it distinctly. But time passes for all of us. And as Sheik says in Ocarina of Time, it goes at different speeds for every individual. Wait, that's not it?! I apologize, I, I didn't mean to be so loud, but I am really freaking surprised! How the hell is that not it?!
The event in question occurred the day before I started the- Oh! The day before! So we have to put in the day before the date that he gives in the book. Very tricky. I suppose that he doesn't feel pain in this eye, since it's not a real eye at all, but rather some kind of fruit, I guess. I mean, he comes from a plant, they said. Even though I didn't notice anything in the dialogue until Sumio somehow assumed that it came from a plant, but... <clears throat> in any case, the numbers were all right just up to the end. Because he wrote the 31st day, but really, what I need to put in is the 30th day. Final answer. Very tricky, kid. Very tricky. Given that they don't exactly explain what the downfall of the silver eye is, what the disadvantages of it are, I don't find it a very compelling explanation for why immortality is bad. Personally, I would totally want to extend my life as long as possible, as long as I retain my faculties and abilities to move around and those sorts of important details. 